Hey there, Boots Owen here. I've been faffing around for a while, but I've finally gotten to the point where I've got a solar grid tie inverter test kit set up. So looking over here, this brown plug goes to the Variac, then the Variac goes backwards through this 110 volt isolation transformer. Then that goes to this AC-DC rectifier. The output from the DC side has a capacitor. In this case, it's 8.5 uh, microfarads, but it's rated at 400 and something volts. So that's uh, also got a little resistor. I think that's one million ohms on it because that's what I had, but it's a, it's a high high wattage one. I think that's what it is anyways. I'm not, still not 100% on electricity, but I'm getting there bit by bit. This um, rectifier is quite a high rated one, so I think it's up to like 800 volts or something quite significant, so it should be adequate here. Then I've got a pair of solar cables coming out of that little junction there to here. I've plugged them into this, which is a Sag Sun Uno. We'll have a look at the rating plate on that. So that's it there, TL4KA. Startup voltage 125, up to 440 volts DC, and it's a 4000 watt unit. I have a similar one on the wall inside running four solar panels and it's way under underpowered basically, or it's way under capacity. But now I've also got the AC wired in. It's on the gray plug that's beside the Variac over there. So let's fire this up. So let's fire this up. It's got no DC switch, so in theory the DC is just live. I'm going to turn up the Variac, and I, where could I check the voltage? I could check it down. I could check it down here, but I think I'll just put in about um, 60 volts. And the way it steps up, that should be adequate to get me up to a wake-up call. There we go, it's waking up on grid inverter Sun Uno TL4KA. This is quite wonderful. We've got some little lights flashing in there. I presume they're some kind of communications thing. Uh, it's got 177 seconds wait time, so that's a bit slow. We'll wait for that. We've got a yellow light on, which is power. It says it here power, fault, and run. It says here, power, fault, and run. So there are the three lights. I've got the lid of it over there, uh, but I just disconnected it so I could see. And we've got an escape and enter button, which also act as up and down. Let's give it a few seconds and I'll come back. I haven't taken the board out of the box, so I don't know what the back of the relays might look like. Sometimes if a relay is toast, then you can see scorching on the underside. So there's two gray relays here. There's four black ones up there and another couple of grays and green ones over behind. The other thing to check is the AC fuse, which is here. I haven't done that. It's on the AC side over here. I haven't done that. I, I've been told this isn't working, which is um, how it was given to Ian Matthews, who I got it from. He, he got them for scrap. I don't know that he paid much or at all for them. I gave him a few quid because I want to make videos out of them and see if I can get them going. And if I can, I can use them myself. And that's that's what I want them for. We're down to 78 seconds there, which is a bit slow. There's a good kind of electrical hum whistle off it. And you can see now I've got the camera reset here. It's You can see those little red and green lights flickering. The red's constant, the green's flickering. If we do find a fault with this, which I'm kind of expecting to find something, but I don't know if I'm going to fix it or not. It kind of depends on what it is. With relay faults, which seems to be the typical thing for inverters, it's um, it's it's easy enough. Andy has showed me how to do it, Andy Reynolds, and I've put it in a previous video, which may appear up here at the moment. 21 seconds. If it is a relay fault, you take the board out, you look for scorching, you replace or repair the relay, and you just bend the relay back if it's snackered, if it's not opening or closing correctly. We should hear some relays now in eight seconds, so I'll just be quiet. Error 
error code 29 relay error <laughs> right well that's exactly what was predicted um as for which one we don't know uh, i could turn it on and off again and again but that's the fault so i guess i need to start fishing we've got the red light has gone out but the green light is on down there um on that board that's kind of funny this unit has two inputs uh, down here and i suspect regardless of which one you put on it'll die so the only thing i could do if we look at it one of the uh, inputs has been cut there that red one what i could do i think that's pv uh, i don't know pv2 i think has been cut and i think the plug was just damaged i could try putting it on it's on pv1 i could try putting it on pv2 there's two there's split split inputs here i could try putting it on the other one see if it starts and that's what i'll do next and i'll come back once it's woken up or it's a few seconds to go so because i was missing a plug for the other for the pv2 input i've just pulled the pv1 input off here and put it over there makes no difference to it i don't think the other part thing i did as part of my test rig was to cut the clips off the solar connectors so in this case here where there's these little tabs that clip on i've just cut them off with the stanley knife so i can just plug it in and out it doesn't have to stay put because it's not going to be in a situation of stress here and likewise for the female components i've chopped off the bit that clips on so i can just slide those plugs on and off that's the bit i always find a bit tricky whenever i'm doing this kind of work testing these things so we're down to 16, 15 seconds and the little red and green lights are flashing. We should hear some relays opening and shutting presently. I found another, there's another two relays. There's one down here and there's another one. You can just see the grey of it over there. And there's, oh, there we go, it's zero. Click, click. That was interesting. No, same thing. Relay error, error code 29. Bit of a weird kind of almost guitar string sound for that last relay. So that's this board um on its way out i've got to figure out how to disconnect the board there's some maybe quite a few big screws holding it down and i presume looking at it for instance down here there's these screws going through the board i presume they're connecting something to a heat sink below because there's a big aluminium heat sink on the back of it so i'm not entirely sure how i can drop that off I guess I just have to start taking screws out because I need to get to the back to see which relay may or may not be on or off. And then I wonder if I have a spare relay. I've got a couple of spare boards for inverters, so I might need to get a spare relay on that. Or just, well, in the first instance, chop the top off the relay and see if it can be bent into position. And if it can, then we're, we're halfway there. Right, so that's it from this Saj Sununo inverter. And that's my little test rig. So before I wrap up this video, let's just take a look at my simple wiring diagram here. Plug to Variac, isolation transformer running backwards. But in this case, I have it earthed. So the transformer box is earthed. I haven't disconnected that. So we've got zero to 240 volts from the Variac. In theory, it's up to zero to 480 volts. Although I think it's running a bit hotter than that if I was to turn it up. Now, what I've seen is that the max RMS input voltage on the um what's that guy called rectifier is only 140 volts according to the data sheet so i don't really want to run it too hot so the reality is i need an isolation transformer because we need to split the power coming into it if they're both coming in i think it can confuse either my fuse board or the machine itself and you can have weird faults so you need an isolation transformer. It's worth checking out John Ward's video on why you need an isolation transformer testing mains equipment with a mains oscilloscope. Because you've basically got mains running in and out of the thing. And uh, the isolation transformer breaks that bond is how I understand it. So you've got two ACs coming into the rectifier. Plus and minus coming out, positive and negative. Then you've got this junction box, which is not junction box, strip connector, which is here. Um... We've got a bleed resistor across it. We've got a any capacitor value is what it says, um, over 300 volts. So this is just one out of a fridge, I suspect, or out of a motor. I can't, I have no idea where it came from. There's another one. Um, the fridges tend to be seven or six, I think. I think that's a fridge, there's a 10. I could have used any of them. 
but I didn't. I used this, the one that I had, mostly because it had good spade connectors on top. And then you run the remaining wires to the inverter, and I've just used some old clips that I had and chopped, as I said previously, I've just chopped the um, snaps off them so that they can just fit in and pull apart again without having to be unlocked, which is the tricky bit on these things, I find. Um, there's no earth on the DC side, and I don't connect the earth on the AC side when I'm testing it. It's important then not to touch anything <laughs> um, that isn't earthed, because there's metal cabinets that should be earthed. But that's how it is if you're playing with these things. This isn't an electrical advice, this is just what I've done. And uh, I think Andy Reynolds has probably put up videos as well on similar test rigs, because he does the same thing. His system will look different. Last bit of information, the uh, the rectifier is really only this little bit, and this is a 3804 CM, no, CM3502 um, rectifier, it says it there. It's mounted to a big heatsink from a CPU, a computer uh, processor, and to do that, I just, there's a hole in the center of the, of the rectifier, so I drilled a hole of an appropriate size to get a self-tapping screw to join in here. I don't even know if you can see. You can just about see what's going on. Yeah, there it is. So the screw goes straight through and I've put a load of thermal paste to thermally bond the rectifier to the heatsink. But that's after a, t after a bit of testing, it's ice cold um, or as cold as it was before. So I'm not even sure I need that. It's quite a hefty, it's quite a hefty rectifier. So I've waffled on. Um, the most important thing as well, and you can see I've got red tape all over this one, check AC, or check um, AC and DC, check the DC side, check positive and negative, make sure that you've got them right and that they're corresponding, because the plugs on some things, I've been told, are the wrong way around, and that would be tricky and a disaster. Right, questions or comments, leave them below. Uh, any advice for me would be helpful. Uh, any worries about capacitors? Uh, tell me about it, but this capacitor here has a bleed resistor so i'm not going to touch it now but it's been off when well, i could but well we can just do it this way so let's put it on voltage let's put it on there let's put it on the highest one and let's just see if there's anything left in it i don't think there is and if you're worried about capacitors um you just have to short them out somehow so just put a piece of metal across the two sides and they'll discharge. In this case, that uh, resistor is doing the discharging just a little bit slowly. So it shouldn't be an issue if you're worried about capacitors. But of course, like some people say a minute, five minutes, some of the machines themselves have a five minute wind down period. Um, the uh, inverters, I've heard five seconds, I don't know. It's, uh, I guess it depends on the cap as well somewhat as to its self-discharge time. Questions or comments, leave them below. Subscribe to the channel. I'd appreciate it. Give us a like if you found this video interesting. And see you next time. Thanks for watching.